Hi, this is Norberto Arroyo. Please stay tuned for Horses and Courses. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's edition of Horses and Courses. I'm Jean Wood. We've got a lot of stakes racing action to bring to you and we're going to start things off at Gulfstream Park where unfortunately the weather was a factor over the weekend beginning on Saturday where a pair of turf stakes were taken off the turf, both of them losing their graded status as both of them were grade threes. They did get uh, downgraded and will be uh, downgraded pending a uh, look by the graded stakes committee. We're going to start with the Canadian Turf Handicap. The name doesn't change the grading does. It's a $100,000 mile and a 16th on a sea of slop. Let's head down to South Florida, the running of the Canadian quote-unquote turf handicap. They're off. Justification and Millennium Dragon, Light Knight through from the inside, Hard Buck in the firing line as well, and Millennium Dragon will be the early pace setter. Everything to gain, and Newfoundland at the back of the pack as they race at the clubhouse turn, Hard Buck denying the rail too. Millennium Dragon, and so Hard Buck will challenge Millennium Dragon up front, and these two go quickly. Justification settles in in third. He's joined by Light Knight through from the inside. Newfoundland is three deep to the back stretch. He is fifth and two and a half lengths off the lead. It's six lengths back to the trailer everything to gain as they turn into the back stretch in the 39th canadian turf handicap no easy leads for millennium dragon as hard buck has challenged him since they sprung the gate millennium dragon three quarters of a length hard buck is second both newfoundland and justification are in striking position justification is third and a tight length from the lead newfoundland is ahead behind him then it's two and a half to light knight who's now under a heavy ride and the trailer is everything to gain there's just three furlongs left to run. Millennium Dragon has had enough of Hard Buck, but he's immediately confronted by Newfoundland, who comes with his run. Millennium Dragon, three quarters of a length. Newfoundland alongside in second. Everything to gain has just gone from sixth up to third, and he's three and a half from the front. Any one of those three can win as they head to the top of the stretch. It is Millennium Dragon in Newfoundland. Millennium Dragon drifted far off the rail. He's in the five or six path, and Newfoundland is fanned out outside of him. Everything to gain still has two and a half lengths to come and they come to the final 16th. Millennium Dragon and Newfoundland. These two throw it down for the final 100 yards. Millennium Dragon, Newfoundland a final surge. Here comes Newfoundland outside of Millennium Dragon. Newfoundland has won it. Newfoundland beat Millennium Dragon by a hard fought head. Everything to gain third and hard buck fourth. Newfoundland and John Velasquez splashing to a neck victory over Millennium Dragon, the pace setter who held on quite gamely with eight plus lengths uh, advantage over everything to gain, who did rally from well off the pace on a very sloppy racetrack. Primarily a turf horse, they left both everything to gain and hard buck in the race, uh, although both of them were horses that historically have preferred the turf surface. Uh, hard buck a little disappointing, running fourth well back in the field. The winner, Newfoundland, an extremely expensive youngster, is a four-year-old chestnut colt, a son of Stormbird from Clear Mandate by Deputy Minister. He was entered this race as a main track only, so obviously the decision to, uh, to put him in here was the right one. Newfoundland uh, is, uh, b was bred rather in Kentucky by G. Watts Humphrey. He's a uh, son of Stormcat from Clear Mandate by Deputy Minister, owned by the Samaya Us Stable and trained by Todd Pletcher. Ridden to victory by John Velasquez. Newfoundland covers the mile in a 16th on the sloppy turf, or the sloppy track rather, at Gulfstream Park in 144 and 4. We're going to head right back down to Florida and the running of the Suwannee River. Again, off the turf for three year olds and up fillies and mares going nine furlongs. Let's head back down to Florida and the running of the Suwannee River. They're at the post. They're off. May Gator, Gator bobbled just, just a bit, but she broke right with wishful, wishful splendor, splendor and these two show the most speed. speed. Young, Young Star makes it three across, across the track as they pass the line for the first time. My Mish is taken back into fourth, and the early trailer is Sandair. 
May Gator now very fast into the clubhouse turn and she sprints away. It is May Gator now two lengths in front and in about the three and a half path well to the center of the racetrack. Young Star and Wishful Slender. My Mish is angled all the way over to the fence. She's fourth and three lengths off the lead and she's two and a half in front of Sandair who's traveling well at the back of the pack as May Gator tries to throttle it down as they turn into the back stretch. In the 55th running of the Swanee River Handicap, May Gator, the dictating front running speed. She leads by a length and three quarters. Young Star and Wishful Splendor are together second and third. It's a gap of three back to My Mish and Sandair. Five lengths from first to last, five furlongs left to run. May Gator continues to cut out the fractions. She's still well off the rail and she leads by two lengths. Wishful Splendor and Young Star content to track second and third. Here's the first move from the back of the pack. It comes from Mark Gidry and Sandair. She's now a joint third and Sandair draws within three of the lead. My Mish is the trailer and they round the far turn. Three furlongs left to run. May Gator continues to lead. She sprints to the quarter pole now. A length and a half in front of Wishful Splendor and Young Star. My Mish moves through. Sandair took a run leaving the backstretch, but now she's back to fifth again and four from May Gator, who didn't corner that well, or is the jock just keeping her out there in the middle of the track? It is May Gator still in front. Wishful Splendor is set down for the final furlong, and here she comes alongside. May Gator just a half ahead in front. Wishful Splendor, these two to the wire in the Swanee River, and Wishful Splendor takes over the lead. May Gator now back to second. It's Wishful Splendor and May Gator. Wishful Splendor in front. The Swanee River handicap goes to Wishful Splendor. She beat May Gator by a length and a quarter. My Mish finished third, and there was fourth. Wishful Splendor and Jose Santos, another one that took very well to the off going here. Winning her second consecutive race, her first stakes victory at seven and a half to one over May Gator, the favorite in the short field of five. Mimic back in the third spot after being reserved early. Uh, she did make a bit of a move down on the rail. Not the easiest part of the racetrack to move on an off track, but uh, not a bad effort to finish third. The winner, Wishful Splendor, is a five-year-old chestnut mare, daughter of Smart Strike from Calem Ho by Salem. He was, she was bred in Kentucky by the J.M.J. Stable owned by John Manganero and trained by Sal Russo. Ridden to victory by Jose Santos. Wishful Splendor covers the mile in an eighth in the Off the Turf Suwannee River Handicap in 154 and four. We're gonna head across the state now to Tampa Bay for a pair of stakes races on Saturday. Uh, I do wanna remind everybody before you ask what happened to the Gailey Gailey actually, that race was canceled after the second race yesterday. They did cancel racing on Sunday at Gulfstream Park. So we do not have a stakes race from Sunday at Gulfstream Park. We do however have a pair from Tampa Bay on Saturday starting with the Gasparilla Stakes. $45,000 for three year old filly sprinting seven. Let's head back down to Florida this time to Tampa in the running of the Gasparilla. And they're off. Crafty tears as expected away sharply and right to the lead. Wild speed comes away running second. Down along the inner rail. There goes bang, bang on the door now moving up and the last horse away. Lady in a red dress. Out of the seven foot long shooter onto the main track and Crafty tears shows the way now the margin by two. Finerty's Frolic is there second. Down along the inner rail. Bang, bang on the door now third with Bird Cheddar. Now moving up to be fourth, two lengths farther back to Wild Speed, and the trailer is Lady in a Red Dress. They're flying up front with a half mile to run. Crafty Tears and Federico Mata calling the shots on the lead and have the margin by three. Charismatic Appeal moves up on the outside second, bang, bang on the door. Is there toward the rail now third? Up on the outside, Wild Speed is now being set down for the drive fourth and toward the rail. As they approach the quarter mile pole, Crafty Tears still the leader, Charismatic Appeal runs at the leader now second. On the far outside, Wild Speed is third. Bird Chatter from between horses fourth. They turn into the stretch. Crafty Tears is digging in gamely. On the outside, Wild Speed runs at her second. Charismatic Appeal is third, but inside the final furlong, it's Crafty Tears in front. Wild Speed can't catch the leader, Crafty Tears makes every pole a winning one reporting home three lengths to the good wild speed is second lady in a red dress third crafty tears federico massa per per perennial leader in the standings there picking up the victory on a good track by about two and three quarter lengths over the favorites wild speed with lady in a red dress rallying from way off the pace 
Five wide rallying move at 16 to 1 to finish in the third spot. The winner, Crafty Tears, is a three year old Dark Bay or Brown daughter of Crafty Friend from Taste the Teardrops by What Luck. She was bred in Kentucky by Abrams, Snukal, and Bloom, owned by the Equest Racing Stable Limited and trained by Ron Allen Sr. Ridden to victory by Federico Mata, Crafty Tears covers the seven furlongs of the Gasparilla in 126 and 4. We're going to head right back to Tampa now for the running of the Manatee, also on Saturday. $45,000 for four-year-olds and up fillies and mares, once again sprinting seven furlongs. Let's head back to Tampa, the running of the Manatee. And they're off. Away and running in perfect order, whatever I want. From the outside, breaks for the lead. With special insignia moving up, there goes Mary Murphy. Charging through down along the inner rail now to challenge and C-SPAN is away with a top flight. The last horse away, the late running, Romance and the Dixie. Up the back stretch, special insignia. On the outside, C-SPAN from between horses and Mary Murphy. Those three across the track vying for the lead. A gap of four, Diablo's Angel Eyes now racing along fourth. Up between horses, Crimson and Roses is now fifth. Down along the inner rail. That's Mill Filet now moving up now to be sixth. Up on the far outside is Cherry Tree Hill now seventh as they swing around the far turn. Mary Murphy toward the rail has the lead by a head. Up on the outside, C-SPAN is still right there second. Special Insignia's had enough and retreats to be third. Cherry Tree Hill now being set down for the drive fourth. Way out on the outside, Diablo's Angel Eyes fifth. And farther out than that is Mill Faville moving white for the drive as they're into the stretch. It's Mary Murphy toward the rail and Cherry Tree Hill is down the center of the track second. Really Royal is third. Inside the final furlong, it's still Mary Murphy in front and Really Royal right center on the outside, Mary Murphy scores to win it by a head over a fast closing Rally Royal. Cherry Tree Hill is third, and once again the late running Romance and Dixie up for fourth, 126 and three, the running time. Mary Murphy showing very good speed, dueling early and drawing off by about a half length from the ch late charging Really Royal, who was well back in the early going, made a huge middle move to finish second at 35 to one. Bombs away in the third spot as well with Cherry Tree Hill. Joe Rocco up for the third spot, 28 to 1. Again, making a uh, very big middle move inside of horses and dropping out of horses, outside of horses, to pick up the third spot in a pretty cagey ride. A couple of horses doing very well from off the pace, taking advantage of the pace duel up front. The winner, Mary Murphy, is a bay four-year-old daughter of Coronado's Quest from Duchess Grace by Crux, Cox's Ridge. Bred in Kentucky by the M375 Thoroughbreds, owned by the breeder and trained by Joe Wanch, Mary Murphy covers the seven furlongs of the manatee in 126 and 3. We are going to pause now for a brief message, and when we return, we'll be heading to the fairgrounds for stakes racing action over the weekend. Please stay with us. Turn on to the tradition, come and feel the good times roll. We've been around this track a time or two. The tradition races on with live thoroughbred racing now through March 28th. Join us throughout our 132nd season at the fairground. Who is this woman? A world-class tennis player? A famous fashion model? No, this is Diane Nelson, one of the nation's top-ranked jockeys. When Diane rides, she wants the best horse. And when Diane has a day off, she wants the best entertainment. And that's at the Teletheater Clubhouse. If you haven't been to the Teletheater Clubhouse yet, you're missing something. It's really for everyone. Bring your friends, your family, and come on down. The Teletheater Clubhouse, Central Avenue, Albany. Welcome back, everyone, to Horses and Courses. We're going to continue with stakes racing action at the fairgrounds, beginning with the Fairgrounds Breeders' Cup stakes, $125,000 for the older horses going the about distance of nine furlongs on the turf. Let's head to the fairgrounds and the running of the Fairgrounds Breeders' Cup. They're all set. Racing. In the middle of the line, Worley with Jin and Sin commands quickly. Skate Away is up there in the early stages with Gentleman JJ. Great Bloom towards the inside. Warparker between horses, not that far off the speed. 
He's a, in a little bit tight in the run down towards the finish line the first time. Mystery Givers third last on the inside from Storybook Kid and Act of War five lengths away. With a lap to go, it's Wally sharing the lead with Jin and Sin and Gentleman JJ out three wide. Just a length to Great Bloom on the inside of Wapaka. Two lengths to Skate Away, two to Mystery Giver, Storybook Kid and four lengths last of all is Act of War. Into the back stretch, Wally by a head to Jin and Sin. They're now a length and a half clear of Gentleman JJ Great Bloom on the inside, running fourth. Well, Parker fifth. Two to skate away. Three lengths to Mystery Giver, Storybook Kid. That pair eight lengths behind the leader. And five in advance of Act of War. Less than five-eighths to go. Wally now moves a length in front of Jin and Sin. Gentleman JJ a length back third. Well, Parker out four wide as two and a half lengths off the speed. Great Bloom tucked in at the fence. Skate away just behind those horses in the orange colours. Three clear of Mystery Giver. Storybook Kid with eight lengths to make up. And seven off last is Act of War. Five sixteenths to go. Wally showing the way by a neck. Jin and Sin's coming closer to him again. Still gentleman JJ holding third spot from Great Bloom on the inside. Skate Away comes four deep. He's looming into it strongly. Mystery Giver two and a half lengths behind Skate Away. Mystery Giver now to the extreme outside. Skate Away at the three sixteenths. Moves up sharply. Goes to the lead. Mystery Giver in immediate danger. Skate Away by one length to Mystery Giver. They're followed by Great Bloom and Warp Wally. It's Skate Away on the inside from Mystery Giver. Mystery Giver comes at Skate Away. Mystery Giver gets his head in front just in time to make it three successes in this race. Skate Away second and Great Bloom finished third clear of Storybook Kid. Mystery Giver making it a three-peat. He has now won this race in off-the-pace style three consecutive seasons here carrying the 120-pound high weight to victory as the second choice in the wagering. The favorite was Worley, who did set the pace but, and faded to finish back off the board as Mystery Giver saved ground, swung out, and made a nice rally to get up in the final strides over Skate Away with Great Bloom back in the third spot. Robbie Alvarado again giving, uh, giving the winner a terrific ride, riding very well this season down at the fairgrounds. Mystery Giver is a six-year-old bay gelding, a son of Dynaformer from Ioia by Nascra. She was bred, he was bred rather in Illinois by David and Patricia Block, owned by Team Block and trained by Richard Scherer, ridden to victory by Robbie Alvarado. Mystery Giver covers the about distance of a mile and an eighth on the turf course in 151 and three. We're going to continue with stakes racing action at the fairgrounds with the running of the Whirl Away, a prep race for the New Orleans Handicap to be run at the end of the month. A grade three hundred thousand dollar mile and a sixteenth for three and up. Let's head back to the fairgrounds now. The running of the Whirl Away. Set. Racing. First out is El Ruler. El Ruler darting to a clear lead from Spanish Empire. Codima, total impact on the fence. Almodovor crossing to fifth, followed by GW Skippy, Al Muhatir, and further back, Classic Par on the inside of MBC. Around the Gentilly turn, eight lengths covering the field. It's El Ruler by a half length. Martin hooks Spanish Empire off the fence. He's moving up outside the leader. Total impact, two back third inside Codima. Two lengths to GW Skippy, one to Almodovor. Two to Classic Par inside MBC and Al Muhatir out three wide as last of all. Now 11 lengths from the leader, which is El Ruler by a half from Spanish Empire at the five eighths. Two and a quarter to total impact kept company by Kodima. Now it's a five length margin to the fifth placed GW Skippy. He in turn is two lengths clear of MBC. Out wide comes Olmo Devore, who at the half mile has 10 lengths to make up. He's out three wide. Classic Par second last and two lengths to Al Muhatir. As they race around on the second turn, Spanish Empire now moves up and takes the lead. He's three quarters of a length in front of El Ruler. The next pair closing ground, total impact off the fence. Kodima coming three wide, just a length to Almodovor sweeping into contention with a rush, followed by MBC. Then Classic Par on the inside from GW Skippy and Al Muhatia. They come to the 316s pole. Spanish Empire is the leader. Almodovor gets to second within a length, followed by Kodima. Al Muhatia from a long way back, total impact next from MBC. MBC past the eighth pole. Old Motivore moves up level with Spanish Empire. Old Motivore now takes a slight lead over Spanish Empire. Then comes Al Muhatia. Old Motivore moving away. He'll win the world away. Three quarters of a length from Spanish Empire. Two lengths to Al Muhatia with Kodima fourth. 
Almodovar picking up the victory, shipping in for the always dangerous Richard Mandela, who seems to have an embarrassment of riches right now. And Almodovar ships into town, rallies from off the pace, and picks up a three-quarter length victory as the favorite over the game Spanish Empire, who was involved in the pace every step of the way and held on well off of a very big win last time out. Al Muhathir picking up the third spot after rallying from well off the pace with a wide rallying move, not quite enough at 30 to 1. The winner, Almodovar, is a bay five-year-old horse, the son of AP Indy from Corazona by El Gran Senor. Uh, last out, finished a good third behind Starcross in the San Pasqual. We're going to see Starcross a little bit later on in the program in the San Antonio. Bred in Kentucky by Wertheimer and Frere, Almodovar is owned by Wertheimer and Frere and Partners, trained by Richard Mandela and ridden to victory by Corey Lannery. Almodovar covers the mile in the 16th at the fairgrounds in 145 and 2. We're going to head next to Oak Lawn Park in the running of the King Cotton Stakes for older sprinters. Six furlongs, $50,000. Let's head down to Oak Lawn Park in Saturday's running of the King Cotton. They're in the gate. And they're off in the King Cotton. Honor Me explodes for the lead. Then between horses goes Wacky for Love. St. Wacky to the outside. Bailey's Edge is fourth. Beverly Greedy is fifth. That is Skeet running sixth. Salty Genius in seventh. And no surprise, but only about seven or eight lengths out of it is Chindy. And down the back stretch, Honoree battling it out with St. Wacky into the outside. Wacky for Love third. Skeet is right outside those leaders fourth by about four. Then it's Bailey's Edge and Beverly Greedy, followed by Salty Genius and Chindy. The quarter was raced in 22 and 2, and Skeet suddenly shoots out there to take command. Honor Me is still second. Wacky for Love trying to move up to the inside of him is St. Wacky. And here they come into the stretch of the King Cotton, a half in 45 and 1. It is Skeet leading the way, Honor Me second. Wacky for Love is third. And down the outside, here he comes. It is Chindy, and he's on the move. Skeet, however, has to jump on the field. He leads it by five. That's Chindy trying to come to the outside of Wacky for Love, but Skeet is full around today, and today the day belongs to Skeet. He's going to win it by four. Wacky for Love's hold on for second, and Chindy finish third. Skeet and John McKee, who is riding extremely well down at Oak Lawn Park this wintertime, picking up a nice victory here by an easy four lengths as the even money choice over Wacky for Love. The gray ghost Chindy making his usual off the pace rallying move to finish in the third spot over one of his favorite racetracks. The winner Skeet is a chestnut four-year-old son of Dove Hunt from Dancing Monarch by Wavering Monarch. He was bred in Florida by Nom Dominic Schipoli. He's owned by Fly Racing Limited and trained by Bob Holfus. Ridden to victory by John McKee. Skeet covers the six furlongs of the King Cotton at Oak Lawn in 109 and 1. Going to head just a little bit north to the Mid-Atlantic now and stop at Laurel for the running of the Nellie Morse on Saturday. $50,000 for four-year-old and up. Phillies and Mare is going to go a mile and a sixteenth. Let's head down to Laurel, the running of the Nellie Morse. Now settled, they're off. City Fire headed out to the lead. Fit to Kill was away in good order. Home run hitter is right there along with Blue Hills and Touch of Ginger spun out four wide as they move into the first turn. In the meantime, Sweet Dynamite gets good position, just three lengths from that early pace up ahead, followed by Undercover. Cruise Along has secured the rail and about seven lengths from that pace up ahead. Back to Island Melody in the late running database in the back of the pack and 12 lengths off the lead. Running up the back stretch now in City Fire. Loose on the lead out there, City Fire. Home run hitters in pursuit. Fit to Kill is next in third. Blue Hills is in fourth. Sweet Dynamite is fifth and Touch of Ginger six. Here's Cruise Along racing seventh and nine lengths off the lead. Undercover shooting past Cruise Along and now running past Touch of Ginger well back. We have Island Melody and Database got to be about 20 lengths off that speedy leader. City Fire and Abel Castellano Jr. bulleting right along at a brisk pace by three lengths. Home run hitter fit to kill and fourth position is Blue Hills followed by Sweet Dynamite who's three deep out into the turn. Undercover is next Cruise along, still has about eight or nine lengths to make up. Racing on the outside, Touch of Ginger's under a battle. Database is yet to move, and Island Melody is the trailer. Final turn at the 5 16th, and City Fire, that leader from home run hitter. Cruise along begins to roll on the extreme outside. Sweet Dynamite, Blue Hills is right there. Undercover in the blue, got a winning shot, too, in between horses. Turning for home, and it's City Fire, desperate, drifting a bit off the inside. Cruise along there, Sweet Dynamite is next. Undercover in between 
between horses, trying to barge on through City Fire, drifting way out to the center of the track. Cruise along, pretty much unhampered by that, still trying hard. Undercover, Sweet Dynamite down to the inside. City Fire, here's the wire. City Fire, City Fire, and Sweet Dynamite undercover and cruise along. City Fire in an erratic run in the stretch, and the Nellie Morse barely gets there. They've had some problems filling fields in the, in the mid-Atlantic, but not this race. A 10-horse field, and it was a close finish with a number of heads and noses separating them. It was City Fire with a very nice uh, effort here, despite drifting out badly inside the furlong pole. She did win by a neck. Sweet Dynamite back in the second spot. It was undercover in the third spot, ahead in front of Cruz Along, who was the favorite in the field, who had to settle for fourth, but a very close finish all the way around. The winner, City Fire, a bay four-year-old filly, a daughter of Carson City from Gillingham by Matt Hatchetman, was bred in Kentucky by the Hermitage Farm. Owned by Michael Gill, trained by Mark Schumann, and ridden to victory by Abel Castellano Jr., City Fire covers the mile and a sixteenth of the Nellie Morse at Laurel in one minute, 43 and 3. That's going to wrap up this portion of the program. We're going to pause for one more brief message, and when we return, we'll be heading to Northern California, Southern California, and finishing up at the Big A. Please stay with us. This year, many thoroughbreds, no longer able to compete, will join the ranks of racing's homeless. Since 1982, the Thoroughbred Retirement Foundation and its supporters have been providing help and hope for those in need creating opportunities where once there were none. The TRF, together with the racing industry, is meeting the challenge, taking care of their own. Yesterday's innovative concepts, combining the TRF's rescue mission with educational and rehabilitation goals, have become today's life-saving success stories and a track record of unsurpassed growth. Safely retired thoroughbreds are now enjoying second careers, bringing responsibility, healing, and purpose to the lives of those who need it most. With your help, we can continue our saving mission, ensuring many more horses the welcome home they so richly deserve. Welcome back everyone to Horses and Courses. We're going to continue now with stakes racing action from Northern California where on Golden, at Golden Gate Fields on Saturday they round the Brown Bass, a grade $300,000 mile and a 16th on the turf for fillies and mares. Let's head to Northern California, the running of the Brown Bass. Ready for the brown bass. Here they come. Awkward beginning for Abbey Bridge. Hippo Gators out for the lead along with Just Bill Me and also there is A.B. Noodle. A.B. Noodle's going to stalk this afternoon. She's content to lay third through the early stages. Keys to the heart is inside of Frisco Bell. Abbey Bridge has recovered to come away now in the fourth spot under the wire with a ground-saving trip. Further back races Ila Grande inside of Red Rioja and Hooked on Niners is three wide entering the clubhouse run. Further back races Drew Way and Ladies Mantle. Just Bill Me to set the pace by two and a half from her stable mate Hippo Gator. A.B. Noodle off the pace this afternoon. She races in the clear with three to make up, entering the Lakeside Lawn's backstretch run. Abby Bridge is forwardly placed after an awkward beginning. She's currently at fourth, five from the leader. A length and a half in front of Frisco Bell. It's more than a length to Keys to the Heart. About a length to Red Rioja. A length and a half to Ila Grande along the inside advancing. Hooked on Niners is reserved up the backstretch run. She has about eight or nine to make up. A length in front of Drew away. It's three to Ladies Mantle. A.B. Noodle to confirm Front just Bill Me before the 3 8 Hippo Gators third with two to make up. And they'll go to Abbey Bridge to the rail races, keys to the heart. To the far outside is Frisco Bell. Frisco Bell has more than four to make up, three wide. Red Rioja, one from the rail, five from the front. Hooked on Niners is closing, three or four wide. Drew away has a good six to make up. Ila Grande to the rail. And at the back is Ladies Mantle, top of the lane in the brown best. It's AB Noodle with the lead from Hippo Gator. Abbey Bridge is third. Red Rioja's closing to the rail, and here comes Hooked on Niners charging in the center of the course. Red Rioja and Hooked on Niners, they're going to run right on by A.B. Noodle. Red Rioja, she has the class. Hooked on Niners to her outside, but it's Red Rioja. Red Rioja wins the Brown Bass Handicap. Hooked on Niners for second, A.B. Noodle third. And finishing fourth was Drew away to complete the Superfecta. 
Red Rioja picking up the victory from off the pace, an unhurried uh, early effort. She rallied very nicely three wide and made a nice move up to the inside under Eric St. Martin to win as the favorite. This was her first stakes win in the United States. She is a multiple group three winner in, her nat in Ireland, her native country. Hooked on Niners rallies from well off the pace as is usual, showing no early speed to finish second. A.B. Noodle, who was fairly close to the pace, held on well to finish third. The winner, Red Rioja, is a five-year-old bay mare, a daughter of King's Theatre from foreign relation by distant relative. She was bred in Ireland by Dr. Karen Monica Sanderson, owned by the breeder and trained by Ben Cecil, ridden to victory by Eric St. Martin. Red Rioja covers the mile in a 16th on the turf course at Golden Gate in 1 minute 46 seconds flat. We're going to head next to Southern California for a pair of stakes races beginning on Saturday with the Grade 2 San Antonio for older horses. Unfortunately, drew a very short field to go the nine furlongs, but a very good field, including two horses returning from the Breeders' Cup Classic. Let's head out to California now and take a look at the running of the San Antonio. All set for the San Antonio handicap. And away they go. The four runners broke as one. From the inside gate, Fleet Street Dancer is going to go straight to the lead. Star crosses up in second. Congarese right there in the third spot. But these three now are actually all going to line up on the lead. And let's see, Pleasantly Perfect going to drop in just behind the leading trio. Past the seven eights they go, and Fleet Street Dancer down at the rail, and Star Cross. They go out to set the pace. Congaree is hooked a little wide into the turn now. Star Cross took him a little wide into that turn. Pleasantly Perfect's much closer today, only two lengths off the leader. They go to the three-quarter pole, and Fleet Street Dancer tries to slow them down, but Congaree's not having any of that, and Congaree goes to quicken the pace on the outside now. Star Cross between them, Fleet Street Dancer down at the rail. They're not flying, but they are going a little quicker than they were at the three-quarter pole and still a very close up fourth is pleasantly perfect two lengths would cover the whole four they run to the half mile pole in the san antonio handicap now and it's star cross with a narrow advantage congaree is breathing down his neck in second fleet street dancers right there down at the rail now pleasantly perfect's going to have to go four wide these four runners are in a dead straight line and neck would split them all in fact now a nose would split them all with three eights to go an amazing lineup here fleet street dancer at the rail star cross pleasantly perfect congaree now having to be ridden congaree's got to pick it up they pass the quarter pole and pleasantly perfect now takes a narrow advantage star crosses losing ground at the rail we have fleet street dancer congaree just did not have it today has dropped out of it and it's all pleasantly perfect now set sail for home pleasantly perfect by two by three you can put a ring around pleasantly perfect he's rumped in the san antonio pleasantly perfect and alex Solis. star cross second fleet street dancer was third and Congaree finish fourth. Pleasantly Perfect makes his seasonal debut, a winning one by about four lengths as the second choice. Congaree, Jerry Bailey aboard, did go off as the favorite. Floated a bit wide on the fir into the first turn, but uh, ended up three deep out the back stretch and uh, was really a little bit flat turning for home, dropping back, weakening late, but a terrific performance by Pleasantly Perfect, who was very aggressive, much more so in the early portion of this race than he had been in some of his previous races. You could see him tugging Alex Solis, and he looked terrific heading for home. Uh, Starcross, a very nice effort to finish second. He did have the early lead, dropped back to about third, and re-rallied by a neck in front of Fleet Street Dancer, but a uh, very nice return to the races for Pleasantly Perfect. Congaree, a little bit dull. I'm sure Bob Baffert will have to go back and figure out what the problem was there. He was very good in the Breeders' Cup behind Pleasantly Perfect. Did, uh, did return off that race with a huge win in the Cigar Mile last fall. Had been prepping well for this race. We'll have to see uh, what does happen. It does appear that Pleasantly Perfect exited the race in good shape, and there is a good chance that we will see him back in the big cap, the Santa Anita Handicap, and a possibility will also exist that he may go overseas and take on major international company once more in the Dubai World Cup. So uh, we know Mr. Mandela likes to go to Dubai, so hopefully uh, we'll get a chance to see him uh, match up with some international competition in the very near future. Pleasantly Perfect is a six-year-old bay horse, a son of Pleasant Colony from Regal State by Affirmed. He was bred in Kentucky by the Cloverleaf Farm. Owned by Diamond A Racing and trained by Richard Mandela, ridden to victory by Alex Solis, Pleasantly Perfect wins his seasonal debut in the San Antonio to mile and an eighth in 147 and one. 
We're going to head right back to California now for the running on Sunday of the Palos Verdes Handicap, a grade two $150,000 sprint for older horses. Again, we've got Blues the Standard returning off of his Breeders' Cup second place finish to Cajun Beat. Let's head back to California, the running of the Palos Verdes. And away they go. They're breaking a perfect line. On the far side, Blues the Standard, Giovanetti were both out fast, and Boston Common in the green colour shows good speed, but they're all lining up here. Tough game is coming through one from the rail. Alongside of that, we have our new recruit, and in a little tight here was Captain Squire, was forced to drop back to last. They run past a half-mile pole, Giovanetti's a narrow leader, Marino Marini, the grey's gone up second, tough game, has to be ridden along a little at the rail, but is right there third. Blues the standard is in fourth, Boston Common fifth, on the outside, our new recruit, and now Captain Squire's got some running to do, he's nine off them. They come into the quarter pole, and Blues the standard now makes a run in the pink on the outside, Marino Marini, the grey, Mar Marino Marini, Blues the standard, our new recruit starts to join the Fray, then tough game, Boston Commons far back, they come for home, Marino Marini on the inside, then Blues the standard, our new recruit, they pass the eighth pole, tough finish here, Marino Marini on the inside and Blues the standard, neither one will give an inch, but Blues the standard is going to prevail, he's got the heart of a lion and it showed today, Blues the standard wins the Palace Verdes from Marino Marini, our new recruit and Boston Commons was fourth. Blues the Standard and Mike Smith getting up to win by about a length. A huge performance last time out to finish second in the Breeders' Cup. Here as the favorite, he returns with a terrific effort over the game. Marino Marini, who has turned out to be a very nice sprinter since shipping to the States. Our new recruit finishing in the third spot after running very aggressively between horses early, ending up having to settle for third after a very sharp move to take him into contention. The winner, Blues the Standard. A seven-year-old Bay Gelding, a son of American Standard from Bob's Blue by Bob's Dusty, was bred in Georgia by Terry Brown. He's owned by Jeff Sangara, trained by Ted West, and ridden to victory by Mike Smith. Blues the Standard covers the six furlongs of the Palos Verde Handicap at Santa Anita and 108 flat. We're going to head back to New York next for the running of the correction at Aqueduct on Saturday. The correction handicap is $75,000 ungraded stake for three-year-olds and up fillies and mares sprinting six. Let's head down to New York in the call of the, of the correction handicap. They're off. Balmy Cupid season, Rendonage, Literary Light. She's zealous, gunned through on the inside. Mike Luzzi looking for that lead with She's Zealous. They come through on the inside to get on even terms early with Rendonage. Balmy third on the outside. Literary Light in behind the speed and running along in fourth. Then it's Cupid season fifth, fifth performer, sixth and in between horses. Chiramoya moves through an opening toward the inside, a nifty move there, oh, but Chiramoya got caught in traffic and had to shuffle back. It's a long way back to the other two, bona fide reason and elegant designer. Around the far turn, a 22 and three opening quarter. She's zealous, short lead. Bami right there with them on the outside. Fit performers in between them. Just in behind, Literary Light is fourth. Chiramoya takes to the outside, fifth. Top of the stretch now. Bami far outside. She's zealous, digs down at the rail. Fit performer battles on gamely in between those two. She's Ellis, short lead, fit performer, second, Bami, a week in third. And farther back, it's Chiramoya fourth, and they're coming down to the finish, and it will be She's Zealous, the winner by a hard fought length. Fit performer, second, close for third between Bami and Chiramoya. She's Zealous and Mike Luzzi picking up the victory, the second choice in the wagering here over the favorite fit performer. She's Zealous hustled to the front and Mike Luzzi reading the way this racetrack has been playing all week long, getting to the front in the early going, duking it out with Balmy, but having plenty left to draw clear by a length over the favorite. Balmy held on very nicely to finish a good third after contesting the pace three wide. The winner, She's Zealous, is a dark bay or brown four-year-old filly, a daughter of Cozine from Zealous Connection by Unreal Zeal. Bred in Kentucky by Jan, Jan Siegel, May Siegel, and Samantha Siegel. Owned by the JMS Stables, which is the uh, racing name of the Siegel family. Trained by Richard Dutrow Jr. and ridden to victory by Mike Leslie. She's Zealous, covers the six furlongs of the correction in 110 flat. 
We have one further race to bring to you from the international scene at Nad El Sheba on Thursday, our time Thursday morning, their time Thursday evening. They kicked off the International Racing Carnival with a terrific evening of racing. We are going to bring you the stakes feature, the Maktoum Challenge uh, Round 1, a grade $350,000 for the older horses going the about distance of a mile on the main track. Let's head back now to last Thursday evening's running of the Maktoum Challenge Round 1. They're just about ready, main race of the night, flag is up. It's fly and they're racing in the first round of the Maktoum Challenge. Conflict and Wall knew a little slow to go. Fabria and Change the Grange left the machine quickly. Blayton began well and Conflict is now charging up along the fence. Carul settling fifth but planted out wide. A length and a half to Victory Moon on the outside of Tropical Star. Followed by State Shinto on the inside of Dubai Honor. El Mali is second last and Wal Moo had dropped out to the tail of the field. Conflict on the fence. Join Fabria. Change the Grange three out. Blayton four out and Carul making a line of five. A length away Tropical Star on the inside of Victory Moon. Then State Shinto. Dubai Honor is out very deep. El Mali is second last and Wal Moo will the field in as they travel down the side of the course. Conflict is the leader. 800 metres left to go by a half length. Fabria is second. Blayton goes up to be third. Carul still travelling out very deep. A length away change the Grange. Then Tropical Star looking for a run on the rail. El Mali in trouble. Dubai on a deeper out and then State Shinto. Victory Moon going up on the fence. Five lengths off the lead. Conflict the leader. Fabria on the outside. Tropical Star going up along the fence as they reach the 420 metres mark. Here is Dubai Honor joining in down the centre of the track and shortly afterwards the grey Dubai Honor had stormed up to hit the lead. Tropical Star trying to go with him and here comes State Shinto. State Shinto with 150 metres to run had gone up and raced to the lead. State Shinto three quarters in front. Victory Moon is late. It's too late. State Shinto. State Shinto from Tropical Star and Victory Moon. Then Dubai Honor for Bria Karul. James the Grange, blatant wall moo, El Mali and conflict. The familiar horse getting the win there, State Shinto, who we saw in New York uh, over the last couple of seasons with Kieran McLaughlin. Kieran has decided to open a public stable, stay in the United States, and he is thriving, I must say, while he is here. But uh, in the meantime, his uh, training job with State Shinto, who is not an easy horse to train, is still paying dividends as he has gone uh, back over to Dubai for the winter and picked up his first stakes victory since 1999 in winning the Maktoum bin Rashid Al Maktoum Challenge Round 1, sponsored by Shadwell in a pretty nice fashion here from off the pace over Tropical Star. Victory Moon, who was very good over in Dubai last wintertime, a South African-based horse, picking up the third spot. State Shinto is an eight-year-old dark bay or brown son of Pleasant Colony from Shatha by Mr. Prospector. He was bred in Kentucky. He is currently trained in, uh, in uh, Dubai by Mazi and Al Kurdi, ridden to victory by Ryan Moore, picking up the win for Sheikh Rashid bin Mohammed Al Maktoum. State Shinto covers the, the about distance of a mile at Nad Al Sheba in one minute, 37 and one. That's going to wrap up the program for us this week. Thank you all for joining us on Horses and Courses. We hope you'll be able to see us again next week at the same time. Until then, I'm Jean Wood. Have a great week at the races.